What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, I wanted to quickly go over a few pros and cons that I've come across over the years of working with WordPress as a freelancer. Um, but before we get started with that, I wanted to quickly shout out today's sponsor, which is the WordPress vulnerability database. So the people who run WP scan have exposed their uh, database as an API. So you can go and you can manually check which of your plugins currently has a vulnerability attached to it. And I thought a really cool example of this would be like if you have a, you know, a, a continuous integration or a continuous deployment kind of thing going. And so what you can do is you can hit their API during your build process, check against your currently installed plugins and themes and see if there's any sort of vulnerability that's known. If there is, you flag it, you see what um, you need to do, upgrade or downgrade that plugin or theme, and then you know you fail the build and you, you go do that things. But I thought it was really cool. So if you're interested in um, using that tool, they have a free version and uh, the link is down below. Also, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's kind of take a look here. Um, I've got some pros and I've got some cons of working with WordPress as a freelancer. Um, this video is mostly intended for those who are, you know, in the free freelancing space or about to get into the freelancing space that are considering adding WordPress to their tool belt. Um, so this is not going to be crazy in depth, you know, talking very specific to WordPress developers already, but just those who are kind of thinking about learning it. Um, and so we're going to go over kind of some high level pros and some high level cons. So some of the high level pros is that it's usually going to be a good fit for most of your projects. If you're, especially if you're kind of doing a solo gig where you kind of can do everything yourself, you know, designing or developing or whatever, mixture of both, um, WordPress can tackle quite a bit. It's not kind of the, the magic bullet that you can shoot into any project and just have it work, but I mean, it, it, it'll do a good job for most projects. You can do e-commerce things. You can just do brochure things. You can, you know, have real estate projects. Um, you can have, you know, like a small car dealership or, or things like that, that will uh, be a great fit for WordPress and it handles the job just fine. And of course there's the, you know, the simple, uh, you know, uh, things like a blog. I mean, that's kind of a given, right? Um, but you know, you're not going to want to put a, square peg into a round hole. Um, WordPress does have its limitations and there's definitely projects that it just won't do. And, and I'm sure that the, you'll kind of come into, uh, into contact that. There's a link in the description to a really good WP Shout article that uh, has a flow chart that helps out um, quite a bit when trying to figure out if it's actually going to fit for your project. Um, it can help de um, help develop a project at a rapid pace. So WordPress has a lot of things just right out of the box. You have user management, you can do permissions, you can do, you know, have custom types and custom taxonomies. You have, you know, logging people in, all this kind of stuff. On top of the giant um, community of pre-existing themes and plugins. Um, now I wouldn't recommend using a straight up you know, theme for your project is, well, I mean, you could, depending on what your project outline is, I'm not going to try and guess what your project is currently, but you have access to lots of pre-built themes and plugins that can get you started very quickly. So if your site needs or your project needs a, um, a calendar because they're running a bunch of events for a charity or something like that, and they have these events coming up, you don't need to be able to like custom you don't have to custom build a, an event calendar. You can find a plugin on there. It may cost you a few bucks um, in order to get it, you know, a good one. But I mean, a few bucks to you um, versus, you know, 10 hours of build time to your to your client or something like that is it, it just makes more sense just to get the, the quick and easy solution here. So it has all sorts of things at your disposal that you can just hit up. Um, it's easy to find help when you run into issues. WordPress is extremely popular. Um, now, 
there are tons and tons of communities that also um, revolve around WordPress, Facebook groups, Slack channels, Discord channels, servers, um, Reddit, uh, subreddits, um, lots of people on Twitter, and then of course on Stack Overflow. Like, and then there's people that are in person that you can uh, meet up with. I mean, they have word camps and just about every country and they have uh meetups and um, about just as many so if you need um, in-person help you usually can find that too um so when you run into issues you know help is not that far away and i think that's a huge plus when especially if you're getting into a new platform like wordpress or just freelancing in general having that community is going to be a huge help um, the barrier to entry is really low with WordPress. Like I said, it takes care of a lot for you. There's lots of tutorials out there. They have got lots of videos on my channel to kind of help people out who are getting into WordPress. Um, and you ha it has everything taken care of for you. You can kind of like, if you don't really know how to do a certain thing um, in WordPress, sometimes there's plugins to kind of help you along, um, create helping you create better admin interfaces, um, helps things that help you kind of manage your data better, things that will help you build out front end components. Um, there's lots of things. And then on top of it, you have plugins like Elementor and things like that, that you know you don't require any code at all. So the barrier to entry is extremely low. You don't even have to know how to code in order to create a website with WordPress. So that brings me to the cons. Now there's lots more pros that we can go over, but I feel like those are some pretty important ones. If you guys want me to go dig, dig deeper in that, let me know in the comments. Um, speaking of digging pretty deep, um, you have to dig pretty deep for the good clients. Um, you kind of have to establish yourself as a professional WordPress developer um, in order to get the really good clients. Um, there's a lot of competition out there and that's the that's kind of a, a problem when it comes to WordPress because it has that low barrier to entry, lots of people jump on it and uh, they uh, consider this themselves WordPress developers. Um, now, there's a big difference between a WordPress developer who knows how to kind of drag and drop stuff around versus, you know, how to build something from the ground up and utilizing plugins when absolutely necessary. So sometimes you're going to end up having to pick up a project halfway through from a client to uh, realize that, that their WordPress developer was not really a WordPress developer, didn't know what they were doing. So there's a lot of clients out that so out, out there that are like that. So finding really good clients that, you know, they know what they want. They know that they want to use WordPress. They know that, you know, how to pick out a good developer. They have a good budget, all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit harder to find sometimes. And so you kind of have to establish yourself in the community in your area that you know what you're doing and the good clients will come. Um, you have to know how to compensate for some of the speed issues. So WordPress doesn't come without its baggage, especially if you have to use a, some pre-built plugins. Um, you're going to have to be swimming upstream a little bit. Now, WordPress, you can make it extremely fast. Like, I mean, I know this firsthand from the projects that I've worked on. You can make it very, very fast, and it's it, it's almost indistinguishable from many custom built uh, platforms where you know speed is taken into consideration very heavily. You can do quite a bit. I mean, with caching plugins they have out there that will you know generate a static version of each page that is uh, able to do so with, and then on top of that you have you know all the different things like Memcache and Redis that you can put in front of it and uh, varnish and you, the list goes on, right? Throwing it on a CDN. All the things that you can do to make your site super fast is available to you in WordPress. So when there's those rumors about WordPress is slow, I think bad WordPress sites are kind of, have run amok <laughs> and uh, those, uh, those sites have become slow. And so, you know, it gets that reputation. But however, you, you know, if you're in charge of that WordPress site, you can make it extremely fast. It's just about knowing how to compensate for that certain things that WordPress comes with out of the box that you can straight up get rid of all that kind of stuff. But you know, that's a little bit of a learning curve and knowing how to compensate for um, bad plugins and how to um, enhance the way that they put um, do things in order to uh, speed up your page load times and get good scores on, on lighthouse and things like that. 
Um, you sometimes have to debug third-party code and plugins. I mean, there's kind of a central theme around here about the about plugins, right? Um, sometimes it does make sense to you know throw a you know a, an event calendar plugin on your site. However, if things need to uh, you know, if something goes wrong with that, you know, those plugins are not perfect. Um, there's going to be times where it's, there's just straight up bugs and there's not a, a fix out for it yet. And you have to deal with that. And man, it can be a nightmare sometimes digging through somebody else's code and trying to figure out, first of all, why it's happening. And then second of all, how to fix it. Um, you, It's a risk versus reward kind of scenario. So sometimes, you know, it, it, it can it can bite you in the butt. Um, but in my experience, those times have been, uh, not very frequent, but, um, man, when it does happen, it, it's a huge pain. <laughs> so just something to be aware of is that, you know, if you can build it custom and it fits within your timeline, build it custom and, and, and do a good job that way, you know, it top to bottom. And when things, you know, are messed up, you know, exactly where to, where to look and how to fix it. Um, and this uh, last one kind of goes back to one of the one of the pros is that it might not be a good fit for the project. So if you're planning on just doing like I just do WordPress, um, you're going to have to turn down some projects because it might not be a good fit. And those sometimes can be really good projects, you know, e-commerce solution that's getting, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars that, you know, has tons of, uh, you know, products and things like that. Now, I'm not saying WordPress can't handle, you know, um, word e-commerce sites they it definitely can absolutely but there i think there's a cap there and uh you know also like if you're needing to handle you know extreme amounts of data the wordpress database um is kind of archaic the way that it handles its data now it fits most projects like i said and you'll probably not run into many projects where it's like you know what the wordpress database just cannot handle what you're asking it to do um but i think in the in in you know, the long run, you'll, you'll you'll run into a few of these projects that you don't think WordPress will fit. But, you know, you have to be ready to either turn those down or be able to be flexible to the point where you can take on those projects and just not use WordPress for it. So just being aware of what those limitations are and 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 being able to uh, kind of roll with the punches on it, I think, is a is a big deal. But anyway, I hope you guys found these pros and cons helpful. I, I hope that if you are looking to get into WordPress freelancing, that this uh, provided you with some, uh, you know, guidance in some way. Um, if you uh, guys have any comments on this, let me know in the description. Like the video if you did. Um, if you have a, your own set of uh, pros and your own set of cons, please let me know. Um, what's been a big pain point for you, or what what what's been so something that's been really helpful? Um, um, in the WordPress space that's been helped your, your freelancing career. Uh, but anyway, I'd also like to uh, shout out my patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. We're about to release our third exclusive video. Um, we're going to be going over how to deploy WordPress using uh, Buddy. And it's a great tool to have. So you, you know, you push to get you all of a sudden, you know, it moves all your files over to your server. It makes it real easy and fun. So if you're not a patron and that's something that sounds uh, interesting to you, go over there and uh, sign up. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>